the Titanic. Did you guys know that there's a really great Titanic? No, no bad internet, bad internet. There will be no Titanic movie references in this review whatsoever, none, zero. Okay, now that that's off my chest, let's get back to the review. In 1996, no, no Celine Dion. This is a no Celine Dion zone, God damn it! Can't you see the sign? Ugh, cut. Man, I gotta say, there's a lot of media content about the Titanic. That's obviously not gonna be the focus of this review, but it's worth noting how many movies and short films came out as a result of the Titanic sinking, not to mention the incredible volume of references in movies, books, songs. You in 1996, a company called Cyberflix developed a game called Titanic Adventure Out of Time, a first-person adventure game with pre-rendered backgrounds, a highly intricate and political story, and a very accurately designed world that correlates to how the Titanic was designed, which makes it one of the most complex adventure game maps I've ever played with. Prepare to feel lost and possibly nauseous due to your character running around the hallways at Sonic the Hedgehog speeds. This game brings back some of the strangest memories for me. I actually discovered this game in alternative school. Yes, I got kicked out of public school once upon a time and was forced into going to an alternative school with my fellow hooligans. One fine day in my English class, after finishing up Lord of the Flies, I had some extra time to futz around on the classroom computer. And there on the desktop, I found it. An adventure game. A Titanic adventure game. I booted that shit up and it looked amazing. I remember afternoons of exploring the digital Titanic and being amazed at how much I enjoyed it. I mean, look at these characters. <laughs> look at these animations. Look at that eyebrow. I was sure The Rock had a copyright on that move. These animations may look slightly comical, but for 1996, they really weren't all that bad at all. And you get used to them the more you play the game. Imagine if people talked like this in real life. Hey, Roses. Have you completed that Titanic game yet? You must complete the game in full or else history as we know it will be altered and nobody will ever be able to review it. So yeah, this game reminds me of high school, so I have some really odd memories attached to it. I then forgot about it for the next 15 years or so. I'm not really sure why, I just never sought it out after high school. Probably because I was so busy getting in trouble that it just didn't stay on my radar. Then, thanks to the glory of the internet, somebody brought it back to my attention, and man am I glad for that. This game is epic. One could even say it's Titanic. You play his character Frank Carlson, which is the name of a real-life person from the Titanic's passenger list. Carlson actually never got to ride the Titanic, though, as his car broke down on the way to the dock. Lucky him. Carlson, in this game, is a former Secret Service agent living in a rundown flat in London during World War II with only a scrapbook of shitty memories about the Titanic sinking to keep him company. Worst memory book ever. The story goes that Carlson had failed to carry out the missions he was giving during his time on the Titanic, thus leading to all the world's current problems. Then suddenly, during a raid, your flat is bombed and the impact is so great, it sends you through a time portal and right back to 1912 where you have a second chance to carry out your previously failed missions. I'd like to think this is how most historical events happen. Everything we know that has led up to today's world is the result of an explosion that sends important people through time portals. Once on the Titanic, you're met by Smethels, your snooty steward and professional eyebrow razor. The electric camel, an exercise device. They say it is good for the liver. I wouldn't know. He can answer general questions about the Titanic and other characters, but if you need help or directions, and you will, the lift guy is who you want to talk to. Evening, I'm the lift attendant. And you'll not find one better at taking you where you want to go. Sir, I don't know what it is you're selling, but I'll take it. You must meet with PP. Yes, PP. And whatever urine-related jokes you're thinking right now, I guarantee my 13-year-old mentality already thought of and snickered at. PP, or Penny Pringle, is an agent who gives you clues and advice throughout the game. She tells you that you need to find the Rubaiyat, which is a priceless book of Persian poetry. Intercept the Rubaiyat before it changes hands. Fun fact, a jewel-encrusted copy of the Rubaiyat actually did make it aboard the Titanic in 1912 and it was set to go to New York after it was won in an auction. It was lost when the boat sank. You quickly discover that the Rubaiyat was stolen by another person on board, a German colonel named Zytel. According to this game, there were a lot of unpleasant people traveling on the Titanic, but Zytel can be considered the main antagonist. With the revolutionaries all dead, the Tsar would be secure on his throne. That should not be allowed. Not when there are wars to be planned for. 
Apparently, this tome is going to be traded to an art dealer for an allegedly unimportant painting that holds secret war plans. Your objective? Find the Rubaiyat and the painting and stop communism. What, you thought this was going to be about stopping the Titanic from sinking? Well, spoiler alert, it sinks. And you know what? This game depicts the tragedy of the Titanic really, really well. Unlike other adventure games I've discussed in the past, this really is not a humorous game. Well, I mean, there's this. I don't know why we can just stand here punching this punching bag, but it looks pretty funny. Maybe it's just training for when we have to beat up someone in the boiler room later on. You are the one who stole the ruby yacht. Prepare to die at the hands of Serbia. Oh, and did I mention there's a fencing simulator? I don't see a hoot. <laughs> well, these action sequences look pretty funny, but again, this is not a comedic game. No wonder I never got anywhere in this game when I was younger. This thing is full of politics, deception, murder, and the electric bath. <laughs> and challenging gameplay, this game does not hold your hand at all. Gameplay reminds me a lot of the Laura Bow games, where you're really expected to listen to the dialogue and actually write down clues to help you solve the puzzles. There are very few inventory puzzles. Your objective is to find these tangible objects that will apparently cause World War 1 and 2, but the meat of this game is in the dialogue. It really does feel like you're playing a secret agent doing super important secret agent things. I mean, I even had to send a telegram, and guys, it was awesome. And I gotta be honest with you, I had so much fun dissecting this game's narrative. And there is so much to do. In addition to finding the objects needed to alter history, there are also a lot of subplots you can initiate and work through too. At one point, I found myself defusing a bomb. Holy shit, we better be fast, otherwise the Titanic is doomed. Wait. Oh, and there's also these guys. I say, would you step? Are you hurt, Henry? No harm done. My god. I know they give helpful hints, but this woman scares the shit out of me, and her hat confuses me. At one point, you have to go rescue a baby from somebody who tries to steal it, and suddenly you get the baby in your inventory a la Duke Nukem 3D style. Baby also doubles as a rocket launcher. You in hell. If you do everything correctly, you'll stop World War I and World War II, and Hitler will become a famous painter instead of a dictator because the unimportant painting you find in the game actually had secret war plans on it. And here's another fun fact. Hitler is actually never mentioned in the German version of this game due to Germany's censorship laws. Which makes me wonder how the German version even ended because that painting's actually an important part of the story. If you don't do everything correctly, you'll sink with the ship. There are also a couple other endings in between the good and the bad, but I honestly didn't even get to them because there are so many things you can do in this game to alter them. The replayability meter is very high on this game. It does contain fail states, so like your old traditional adventure games, it takes a lot of trial and error to figure things out. But if you actually listen to the dialogue, take notes, ask people what to do, it shouldn't be too bad. In fact, you may actually find it fun, like I did. There's something strangely romantic about the tragedy of the Titanic. I'll never let go. No, not that kind of romantic. Get that out of here, will ya? For some reason, the media has really latched onto this misfortune, even though there's been other ocean liner accidents that have been far more horrific. The Titanic seems to be one of the most talked about. That poses a really good question. Is it a little odd that we use such a historic catastrophe for entertainment purposes? I mean, real people lost their lives to a watery grave, and yet so many works of both nonfiction and fiction were inspired by it. In fact, the very first movie about the Titanic came out a mere month after the boat sank. A month! That's crazy! And since then, there have been more than a handful of published books, survivor accounts, movies, and a few games. But why? Why this? Why the Titanic? Well, I think timing played a huge role. Hollywood was starting to become a very prominent thing at that time, and with the survivor stories and books portraying the story, it was easy to glamorize, and over time, people became more and more interested. The game was honestly really respectful to the event itself, and I didn't feel a sense of happiness after beating it. Accomplished, yes. Victorious, maybe. But it was still somber when the Titanic sank in the game. And actually, the room and boat designs in this game have been used in documentaries because of how close it is to the actual ship, so it was definitely meant to be precise as possible. It does, however, sometimes portray the Titanic passengers as snooty rich folk. Everyone's here. The Astors, the George Wideners, the Countess of Roth, such a wonderful girl. The Strausses, I saw them on D-Deck tonight. The Ryersons, the Henry Harpers. I could just go on and on. But perhaps that's accurate to the survivor accounts. So is it weird to play a game in which the plot comes from real life? 
It seems like a completely common thing in video games that really isn't thought of as terribly strange, but to be honest, it's something that crosses my mind from time to time. What do you guys think? Do you think it's weird? And that, my friends, is Titanic Adventure Out of Time, a beautiful, somewhat forgotten game that took a lot of work to design, no doubt. Worth a glance? I'd say so. Oh, for fuck's sake, cut to black. Hey everyone, you just watched a video of me talking about the Titanic. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing this game. I'll never let go, Titanic game. If you want to check out some other work I've done, there's a clickable box right there on the screen that will send you through a time portal back to the previous video. If you want to see other random thoughts I post, then consider following me on my social media networks where sometimes I post weird quips about weird things. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.